Good, I'm sure she will. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Uh, God is faithful. God is here. He's with us right now. Jesus is alive. And he will touch every single one of you today as he does every week. And he will touch those who are watching online as he does every single week. Jesus is alive. And because he is alive for this reason, he can work signs and wonders either directly or through his disciples. And this is why you see people are getting healed and they're getting delivered and witchcraft is breaking and people are changing and marriages are being restored and people are turning away from sin to holiness. This is all because Jesus Christ is alive. He paid the price on the cross. He paid the price for our freedom. He paid the price so that we can walk in blessing. And this is why we can do these things today. This is why we can think from the mind of Christ today, because he paid the price. This is why we can be free today. We can be healed today. We can have peace today because he paid the price. So today I want to teach on the kingdom of God. It's a, it's a powerful topic. The center of Jesus's message was the kingdom of God. It was all about the kingdom of God. And so it's very important if it was at the center of Jesus's message, then the kingdom of God must be at the center of our lives. So this is what I'm going to teach on today, the kingdom of God. When the kingdom of God comes near you, because there is a difference between the kingdom of God coming near you and the kingdom of God establishing within you. There's a difference between these two. So let's start here first. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is a place or a situation where God reigns. The king of the kingdom of God is King Jesus. Any place or situation where God reigns, the kingdom of God has come near there. So in heaven, the kingdom of God already is. On earth, not so much, but it's growing, it's expanding. It's materializing and I will tell you how that's done during this sermon. But in heaven, it's already done. And this is why Jesus prayed and said, Father, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven. So in heaven, it already is. And this kingdom needs to come on earth. So God already reigns in heaven. He's already sitting on his throne in heaven. And we want to bring it on earth. So what does the kingdom of God look like? The kingdom of God looks like a place. The kingdom of God looks like a place where God is sitting on the throne. The kingdom of God looks like good health. The kingdom of God looks like freedom from bondage. Within the kingdom of God, there is peace. Within the kingdom of God, there is joy. Within the kingdom of God, there is love and kindness and goodness and gentleness and everything that is of the nature of Christ. And everything that is of the nature of Jesus Christ. This is all within the kingdom of God because the king of that kingdom is Jesus Christ. So everything within his kingdom must be revolve around the nature of Jesus. Everything within the kingdom of God must revolve around the commands of the king of that kingdom, which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gives commands and lives in a way that is of the nature of God. So everything within the kingdom of God revolves around the nature of God. You will not find something within the kingdom of God that does not revolve around the nature of God, that does not reflect the nature of God, that is not the nature of God. You will not find it. So that's the kingdom of God. That's what the kingdom of God looks like. 
Now let's come over here so I can explain very quickly what the kingdom of darkness looks like. The kingdom, everything within the kingdom of darkness, because it's a different ruler and by no means are, is Jesus equal to Satan. Absolutely no. Nor does Satan have this same power as Jesus. Absolutely no. Jesus is the name above every name, every power, every authority, every dominion. Please understand that. But this kingdom is still in operation here in this natural, in this, in this world, on, the, on this earth. So the kingdom of darkness, within the kingdom of darkness, you will find the things that are of the nature of Satan, the enemy, sickness. Things that you do not find in the kingdom of God. Things that contradict, things that do not agree with the kingdom of God. Things that are going against the nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a different kingdom. It's the kingdom of darkness. Here you find sickness, demonic bondages, a whole load of witchcraft, chaos, anger, hate, reviling, sin, pride, murder, rape, fornication, adultery, everything that is the opposite of the kingdom of God. So we have the kingdom of God, which is of light, and the ruler of that kingdom is King Jesus. And then we have the kingdom of darkness, and Satan is ruling there, and we find his nature. It's only darkness there, okay? The kingdom of darkness is currently in operation here in the world. We see it. We see it sometimes. You may see it sometimes in your own life. Where you may have hidden pride, hidden jealousy. That is not from the kingdom of God. Where you might be gossiping about somebody that's gossiped about you. Regardless of if you're in the right or in the wrong. When you choose to return evil for evil, you, you automatically are now operating from aspects that are of the kingdom of darkness. It's not about being right or wrong. Jesus was right, but look at the sacrifice he made. It's not, it's not about being right or wrong. So we see it sometimes, darkness in operation. You may see it in operation if you're in your lives, depending on how far along, how deep you are with your walk with the Lord. And we see the kingdom of darkness in operation in many people around the world. We see war, we see murder, we see rape, we see slander, we see greed, we see coveting, we see, we see, we see. That's not the kingdom of God. That is somewhere where the kingdom of God has not yet come. Or that is somewhere where the kingdom of God is not fully in operation. And this is why Jesus prayed, Father, let your kingdom come to earth as it already is in heaven. As, as, it, as, as it is already established in heaven, let it come and take over this earth. Throw out the works of darkness. Throw out that kingdom of darkness and let your holy kingdom be established in its place. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. God is so wonderful. Jesus said in John chapter 18, verse 36, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. John chapter 18, verse 36. My kingdom is not of this world. So the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ is a different kingdom than what we see here in operation in this world. So with that being said, I want to help you understand how the kingdom of God can come to you, then how the kingdom of God can be established within you, and then finally, how you can release the kingdom of God in this world. Destroying and throwing out the kingdom of darkness and in its place, 
establishing, advancing the kingdom of God in people's lives, in this area, in this nation, in your home, and so on and so forth. That's what it means to advance the kingdom of God. And that is exactly why, again, Jesus prayed, your kingdom come to earth as it is in heaven. So if Jesus is making this prayer, Father, let your kingdom come to earth as it already is there, then the kingdom of God must be the center of our lives. This also must be a part of our daily prayers and must be in our hearts to want God's king kingdom to come and to want God's kingdom to be established here on earth. So let's start at the first step. How does the kingdom of God come near us? Well, remember this, when Jesus would go out and heal people, remember sickness is a part of the kingdom of darkness. So somewhere the kingdom of darkness is in operation in that person's life, yes? So when Jesus would come, him being filled with the kingdom of God, and he would lay hands on the sick and release healing, what is he do releasing in essence? The kingdom of God. And what would happen to the sickness in the, in the sick body? It would leave and in its place, healing would materialize. That's in the natural. In the spiritual, this is what is happening. Jesus is coming face to face with the kingdom of darkness. And he's commanding that sickness to leave. In other words, he's commanding the works of darkness to leave. In other words, he's commanding the kingdom of darkness leave. And it obeys. Why? Because Jesus is the name above every name. He is the one with all power and authority over darkness, over sin, over suicide, over sickness, over everything of darkness. He's the name above every name. And this is why I said earlier, it's not a battle between the two kingdoms. No, 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 certainly not. Victory is already the Lord's. It's about God is just looking for vessels to stand in that place as Jesus stood, to stand in the place as the Apostle Paul stood, as the disciples of Jesus stood, to release the kingdom. Every time, every time, Notice every time, notice when Jesus would heal a person, what did he say to them? The kingdom of God has come near you. The kingdom of God has come near you. So that's how the kingdom of God comes near someone. It requires somebody who already has the kingdom of God, and I'm going to explain how that's done, who already comes, has the kingdom of God to release the kingdom to that person so the kingdom of God can come near them. Now it's up to that person because God has given them free will to choose. Do I want to be, I've, I've experienced the kingdom of God. I've experienced the power of that kingdom. Where I had sickness, now I have good health. Where I had demonic bondage, now I have freedom. Where I had X, Y, Z, fill in the gap. And now that person has free choice to choose if they want to be a part of that kingdom or if they choose to reject the kingdom. So the kingdom of God has come near them, but the kingdom of God is not yet being established within them. So that's the first, that's the first step, how the kingdom of God can come near someone. There was a time when the kingdom of God came near every single one of us. And we all had free choice to decide if we want to be a part of that kingdom or not. I remember when the kingdom of God came near me. And I had the choice to choose. And this is how we choose. It brings us to the next step. How do we choose the kingdom of God so it can start to be established in us? And the answer is very simple. It is this. To receive the kingdom of God, you must first receive the king of that kingdom. And that's Jesus Christ. You cannot receive the kingdom of God. And by receive, I mean for the kingdom of God to start being established in you. Without receiving the king of the kingdom. And so we receive the kingdom of God by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ.
into our hearts as Lord and Savior. You cannot receive someone's kingdom. Let's just, just imagine for a second we're talking about a physical kingdom. Like, um, let's say, for example, Buckingham Palace in, in, in England. And the king of that kingdom is King Charles. God bless his soul. Now, you cannot walk in to that kingdom without the consent of the king of that kingdom. It's the same in the spirit realm. It's the same with the spirit realm. And so the way for the kingdom of God to come within you is to receive the king of that kingdom, which is Jesus Christ. And that is done through faith. It is not through religious practices, through religious rituals. It's none of that. It's by faith. Christ, you receive Christ by faith. Christ dwells in your hearts through faith. And it's just as simple as wholeheartedly saying, Lord Jesus, I want to, I want to invite you into my heart. I want to dedicate my life to you. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. I believe God raised you on the third day. I believe you are alive. Because you are alive, I invite you to come and live inside my heart. And when the invitation is genuine, the Lord Jesus comes to live inside you and he starts to dwell there. It's not that he comes to live inside you and then he leaves. No, he comes to live inside you and he dwells there. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. This is where it gets interesting. The more you allow Jesus access. I have fallen. Okay, sit down. I have fallen. You fell? Yeah, I go from this church with the blood. You, you cannot sit? No? Do you, do you want to sit over there? I want to. I want Okay, so, okay, everyone take your seats, please. Yes, yes, you can sit. Okay. Hallelujah. This is where it gets interesting. So we enter God's kingdom by accepting Jesus Christ. There is no other way. You, you, don't, you cannot enter God's kingdom without receiving Jesus Christ. This is where it gets interesting. The more you allow Jesus Christ to sit on the throne of your heart, the more his kingdom establishes within you. The less you allow Jesus to sit on the throne of your heart, the less his kingdom is established within you. What does this mean? It means the kingdom of God is a place where Jesus reigns. There are many people who invite Jesus to, they receive Jesus as Savior and he comes to live inside them. But then they kind of push him to the back burner and live life how they want. These are people who have received Jesus Christ, but he's not the one sitting on the throne of the heart as the king. Please understand that the kingdom of God is not a physical kingdom with walls. It is a spiritual kingdom and the way that spiritual kingdom is established within you is through transformation of heart. It's not like in the physical realm where the way the kingdom is established is through building the walls and then sending people out and then establishing some. It's not like that. The spiritual kingdom of God is established within you through transformation of heart. Through a change of mind, through a change of heart, through a change of beliefs, through a change in your lifestyle, through a change in how you walk in this life. The kingdom of God is established within you when you turn, is, is established within you more and more. When you turn away from sin toward holiness, remember one is the kingdom of darkness and the other is the kingdom of God. The more you turn away from the self, from the wor worldly way of living, from the flesh, from the carnal mind, 
toward the spiritual things of God, toward the heavenly things, toward the mind of Christ, toward holiness, the more you make this change in your mind, in your heart, in your life, the kingdom of God is continuously being established, established, established within you. And this is why you see some Christians, they've been a Christian for 20 years, yet you st they still look very worldly. You're still not seeing the character of Jesus. You're still not seeing them walking in the fullness of the kingdom of God. And these are the people who still choose to have Jesus, but live in their own way. And there are a lot of these people who think they have Jesus and they do not. But then you see someone who's only recently come to the Lord and you see that I see the nature of Christ. I see that they are just releasing the, the kingdom of God, the healing, the freedom, the peace, the love, the joy, continuously releasing, releasing, releasing. God has given every single one of us free will to choose how much the kingdom of God will establish in every single one of you. So the kingdom of God, every time I approach someone and tell them the truth of the gospel and they decide to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and receive Jesus into their heart as Lord and Savior, the kingdom of God has come within them. Every time I approach a sick person and release healing, the kingdom of God has come near them. Near. It's not yet within them until they receive Jesus. Now let me also say this. Every time we turn somebody either me or you or anybody, every time we turn somebody away from sin toward holiness, we are destroying the kingdom of God, darkness and advancing the kingdom of God. Every time we bring someone to repentance, we are destroying the kingdom of darkness as it, that is in operation there and advancing the kingdom of God. Every time we bring peace to a chaotic person, chaotic situation, we are destroying the kingdom of darkness and advancing the kingdom of God. Can you see how it's done? So we've spoken about how the kingdom of God can come near someone and then they have free choice to receive the king of that kingdom so they can enter the kingdom of God. We've spoken about how the kingdom of God comes inside you and that's only by receiving King Jesus. There is no other way. And we can all be on different levels of... Uh, on this journey with our Lord Jesus. So the kingdom of God is a place where God reigns. So someone can receive Jesus Christ into their heart, but not allow him to reign in their hearts. So therefore, the kingdom of God is not growing, it's not establishing within them. Scripture says the kingdom of God is as a seed. So the kingdom of God comes within you as a seed, and it's your job to water that seed so it can grow and produce uh, the kingdom. So the more you turn away from darkness to light, the more you allow the Holy Spirit to transform your heart, the more you live as the word says, the more you walk God's way, the, that's the equivalent of water in that seed. The kingdom of God is as a seed. It's the equivalent of water in that seed. And that's how the kingdom of God establishes within you. Otherwise, if you choose to walk very worldly, to choose to walk, walk your way, that's the equivalent of not watering that seed. So, so the seed just remains as a seed. There's a potential for it to grow in your life so you can be fruitful if you choose. Otherwise, if you choose not to, it would be like saying, well, I choose King Jesus. I choose to be a part of his kingdom, but I don't want to follow his rules. His word. I don't want to live God's way. I don't want to live his way. I want to be in the kingdom of God, living my own way. Chaos, revenge, judgment, gossip, sickness. It doesn't work like that. Because these are the things of the kingdom of darkness. So if you choose to live that way, 
you will remain a part of the kingdom of darkness. And this is why we see a lot of Christians, they've been with the Lord how many years, but they're still walking in so much darkness. In other words, the kingdom of darkness is still very much in operation in their lives. Very much in operation in their lives. And what's worse is that many of them turn around and say, well, I've received Jesus and where are my blessings? <laughs> you receive Jesus. Blessings come from walking in the ways of God. The Bible says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. It's something that's already done. It's past tense. He has blessed us. It's already done with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. So these blessings are your possession by inheritance if you go out and possess them. And, you, and, and these spiritual blessings are many from peace and love and joy to goodness and kindness and are many to walking in power, walking in authority, walking in have, having the power to condemn the voice of darkness that rises up against you because this is the inheritance of the Lord and that no weapon formed against you shall prosper because this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. Notice, this is the inheritance of the servants. Servants of the Lord. It doesn't say this is the inheritance of those who have received Jesus Christ with words. Just say, okay, Jesus come. No, of the servants of the Lord. It means you're walking and serving in the way that the Lord says. It means you're walking as the word says. It means you're walking God's way. It means you're walking in purity and holiness. Now, it's not one day from to the next, although it can be, because all things are possible with God. But it's a process. The more you turn away from darkness, every step you take away from darkness toward the ways, walking in the ways of God, the more you water the seed that is the kingdom and the more the seed of the kingdom of God is establishing within you. It's a process. It's a journey. It's a journey. Hallelujah. Amen. So the kingdom of God is a place where God reigns. God reigns in heaven. God reigns in some of our hearts. God reigns in my heart. That's why the kingdom of God is continuously growing and growing and establishing and establishing within me. That's why it's so easy for me to bring the kingdom of God to somebody. Jesus healed the sick and said, the kingdom of God has come near you. That's why it's so easy because I'm full of the kingdom of God because Jesus Christ, the King is sitting on the throne of my heart. Remember, the kingdom of God is a place where God reigns. A King has a throne. The throne within this temple of God is the heart. So only when Jesus is sitting on the throne of your heart is God reigning within you. Only when God is sitting on the throne of your heart. And this is why we must have an undivided heart for the Lord. An undivided heart means complete unity with the Lord, complete oneness, completely walk in his way, completely turn my back to the works of darkness, has no power over me. Jesus says, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. There's nothing of his in me, Jesus said. Nothing of his in me to have a hold over me, to draw me. No, there's nothing. And Jesus is the example. We need to be living the same way. That the, key, the ruler of this world is coming. He was the ruler, but he's been cast out. He's no longer the ruler, although he likes to deceive people that he still is. No, Jesus cast him out. Jesus is the ruler. But the kingdom of God will never come somewhere by force. I cannot force you to give you healing or to give you freedom or to give you peace. <laughs> 
and so that the kingdom of God can come near you. But then even more so, I cannot force you to receive Jesus Christ into your heart so the kingdom of God can come within you. Because the kingdom being near you and the kingdom being within you are two different things. So God reigns when you allow him to sit on the throne of your heart. This means an undivided heart toward God. Undivided. That would be the opposite of a divided heart. That would be the opposite of, well, I give this part of my heart to Jesus on Sunday when I go to church. Now, the remainder of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I give my heart here and then there and then here. This is a divided heart. Your heart is divided many places. That's not what it looks like to have Jesus sitting on the throne of your heart as king. And because he's not sitting on the throne of your heart, because you have other idols sitting on the throne of your heart, this is why the kingdom of God is not establishing fully within you. This is why you see people who have been with the Lord 20 years and they still were not seeing the fruit of the kingdom. Yes? Is this becoming, is this beginning to be more clear to you? How the kingdom of God functions? We have free choice to allow Jesus to sit on the throne of our hearts. He will never come by force. Never, ever, ever. You have free choice. And free choice means love. Imagine somebody taking you by force and saying, you have to come this, come over here. You have to do this. You have to do it this way. That's not love. That's oppression. That's force. It's not love. For those who say, well, why does God allow? Why doesn't God just do it that we have no choice but to choose his ways? Because that's not love. That's oppression. That's not love. Love is when the other person has all of these options, yet chooses to be with you, chooses you, chooses your way. That's love. So when he sits, we, we must allow him to sit on the throne of our hearts. And then through obedience to his commands, his kingdom, he, he begins to establish his kingdom within us. Through obedience to his commands, he establishes with ki his kingdom within us. All we, all we do is just obey. It's just submit. It's just submit to him. It's just yield to the Holy Spirit. It's just God do things your way. I choose you. I invite you into my heart. And then through obedience to his commands, the more we obey his commands, the more we yield to him, the more he, as the one sitting on the throne, the more he builds his kingdom within us. Jesus does it. So why is Jesus not building his kingdom within me, many people say? Because he, he's not the one sitting on the throne of your heart and he will never come by force. He will never come by force. God knows when where to build his kingdom and where not to build his kingdom. When he sees a surrendered heart, he says, this is good ground. Remember the four seeds? And they planted the, the seed in the soil and the birds of the air came and devoured. And in the second ground, it was a rocky ground. God knows. And the fourth ground finally was a good soil. These soils are different levels of your heart was a good soil, where the, 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 the seed was received and it grew and produced multifold. God knows that the condition of your heart is what determines whether the kingdom of God establishes within you. The heart is the soil where you plant the seed. Remember, the kingdom of God is as a seed. It's come and it's planted into your heart. Some people allow the birds of the air, which is Satan, to come and grab that seed. Other people allow that seed to grow with thorns and other kind of wild grass, wild wheat, wild other things that grow. 
the concerns and riches of life that would be the equivalent of having idols so jesus again is not the one sitting on the throne of your heart go and read the four soils and so for the kingdom of god to come within us once again we have to receive the lord jesus christ and then through obedience to his commands he is the one who establishes his kingdom within us yeah hallelujah praise the lord amen amen, amen. god is good if you've received jesus christ into your heart he lives in you but unless you let him reign his kingdom will remain just a seed in you jesus says your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it already is in heaven so kingdom the kingdom of god is already established fully 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 in heaven but it doesn't come in that form of fullness immediately inside you it comes as a seed first of all if the kingdom of god was to come fully inside you the way it is in heaven you probably wouldn't know what to do with it and if your heart is not right by god with that power with that authority with that everything the blessings that come with it it could you could use it to destroy you or destroy others this is why the kingdom of god is a seed it grows slowly it's like taking a small pot you put some soil in it and then uprooting this big tree which represents the kingdom of god in its fullest and try to stick it in that in that pot it doesn't work this is why it starts off as a seed and then you water it and then when you see that seed has outgrown this pot which represents the heart now let's change the pot it's a process it's the move it's a move of the holy spirit that's the condition of your heart it's growing it's becoming a heart that can hold the kingdom of god within you you have a part to take in this and so does the holy spirit it's you co-work with the holy spirit you must co-work with the holy spirit so jesus christ lives in you jesus christ lives in you but unless you allow him to reign in you the kingdom of god will remain as a seed or if it's grown a little the kingdom of god will remain as a small plant but it, but it will not grow into that full tree full of fruit a fruitful life where you are walking in the fullness of the kingdom of god unless you allow jesus to reign in your heart it's up to you and god has given you this free will so please understand this jesus brings his kingdom or the disciples of jesus or the apostle paul brings the kingdom of god when they rescue people from sin when they heal the sick when they cast out demons when they bring peace to a person when they call somebody to repent by the power of the spirit working in them when they turn people away from darkness to the light that's the kingdom of god coming and this is something that you can do with the holy spirit in your own lives and in the lives of those around you you can bring the kingdom of god to them the kingdom of god is inside you and you can bring the kingdom of god to people there's something that you can do today if if, if you're somebody who's thinking yeah but I, I don't have enough it's the kingdom of god is not fully established well go and take the, the 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 amount that you have and as you are going and taking you would be walking in god's way so therefore as you go the kingdom of god is establishing within you more and more as you go this is why he who has more will be given he who has more will be given even that little bit that you have Go and take the kingdom of God somewhere to someone. And as you go, it will multiply.
Some produce 30 fold, others 60 fold, others 100 fold. It multiplies. It grows. It becoming fruitful. Going and advancing the kingdom of God would be like watering that seed, watering that plant. And so as you're going and advancing the kingdom, it's growing within you. There's, there's something that every single one of us can do today. So this means that holiness is associated with the development of the kingdom of God within you. Holiness. Living, uh, the more you purify, the more you cleanse your heart, the more the kingdom of God becomes established within you. And also the more you help others cleanse their heart, the more the kingdom of God is advancing within them. Holiness is a lifestyle. Holiness is a lifestyle. Not something we do just on Sunday. Holiness is a lifestyle that allows us to walk in the fullness of the kingdom. There is no sin in the kingdom of God. Holiness is a lifestyle that allows you to walk in the victory because victory is already the Lord's. So when you're walking in this victory, when Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne of your heart as the king, victory is yours because victory is already his. Oops, are we starting to see how this is working? How the kingdom of God, the order of God's kingdom, how the kingdom of God operates. Hmm? Praise the Lord. Holiness unlocks your blessing. Holiness. A lot of people think the Bible says that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. So all I need to do is come to Jesus and then all these blessings will be mine. That's partly true. These blessings are yours. They're your inheritance. They are your possession by inheritance when you come to the Lord Jesus Christ your possession by inheritance, which means you have to make the step to go and possess it. And that step is called holiness. Holiness is what unlocks your blessings for you to possess that which is already yours. A lot of people think, well, I, I, I have come to Jesus, so where are my blessings? Well, where is the holiness? Where is the holiness? The heart is still filled with jealousy and pride and rage and bitterness and resentment. Let me give you another name for all these things that I've mentioned. Idols. These are idols. The Bible tells us jealousy is an idol. An idol is something that you put before God. If you have idols in your life, then Jesus is not sitting on the throne as number one. You've divided your heart. You've given Jesus a part of your heart, but not all of your heart. If idols are sitting on the throne of your heart, then that's where your worship is going. It's a form of worship toward them. Well, God's not going to access, you're not going to access all the spiritual blessings of God while you are worshiping idols. <laughs> Do you understand how this is working? When you come to Jesus and you're walking in the ways of Jesus, you have access to everything that represents Jesus. When you're choosing an idol, and an idol people have as their gods, they have money as their gods, they have uh, relationships as their gods, uh, uh, sexual intercourse as their gods, unforgiveness as their god. In other words, it's number one in their life. That's what we mean by they have it as their god. If you're not following the Lord Jesus and you're following these idols, in their way, then you will receive everything that idol has for you. You can't expect to be following this idol over here, this God over here, this false God over here, and receive the blessings of Jesus rather than the negativity, the darkness that this idol here is offering. And vice versa, you cannot expect to follow the Lord Jesus and not receive the blessings, but rather receive the darkness over here. It doesn't work that way. So if you see that there is still darkness in your lives or in the lives of uh, 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 
a loved one or, or anybody, that's an open door where they're giving the devil a foothold. It's an open door. And this is, this is very sad for unbelievers for, because for an unbeliever, they have not invited Jesus into their heart. So for them, it's just continuously idols in their heart, idols, idols, idols. But it's also those who have received Jesus Christ into their heart, but are still walking in the flesh, in the carnal mind, in the ways of this world, uh, lukewarm. And, you, and we know what Jesus said about lukewarm. I will spit you out of my mouth. The lukewarm life is so distasteful to the Lord Jesus that he will just spit you out of his mouth. Because you have the appearance of uh, uh, walking with Jesus. You have the appearance of holiness. You have the appearance of fruitful. But when someone approaches you, it's barrenness. Barrenness. Because Jesus is the life. He's the only one that brings life. And if you're not walking in the ways of Jesus, there's no life, there's barrenness. So it's about inviting the Lord Jesus into your heart. And in a moment, I'm going to explain how to release the kingdom of God. So we've spoken about how the kingdom of God comes near someone. We've spoken about how the kingdom of God comes within you and how it slowly, slowly, a process becomes established within you from a seed to a huge tree that is fruitful. And in just a moment, we will talk about how to release the kingdom of God. Holiness is the key that unlocks your blessings. What does this holiness look like? For those of you who do not know, it looks like this. Holiness looks like walking as the word of God says. Holiness looks like living God's way. It looks like doing everything possible to live according to God's way. It looks like purification. It looks like a cleansing. It looks like your heart being cleansed of all wickedness, all evil, all corruption, all defilement. I gave you the name of these things just a moment ago, idols. Holiness looks like removing all idols from your life. Remember, jealousy is an idol, pride is an idol, rage is an idol. Anything you put before God. So when you go approach someone and you, or, or behind their backs and say, well, they've done too much for me. I cannot forgive them, even though Jesus says forgive. Well, you're putting this unforgiveness before Jesus. That's an idol. An idol is anything you put before Jesus. So therefore, you're dividing your heart now. It is no longer Jesus as number one in your heart, because if he were number one, you would say the Lord Jesus says forgive, so I forgive. So now you're dividing your heart and you will receive what this idol carries more unforgiveness, more bitterness, more resentment, more you receive just as you receive what Jesus carries when you follow him. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. One is of the kingdom of darkness and one is of the kingdom of God. So holiness also looks like um, choosing to, to, to submit to the Holy Spirit, to submit to the Holy Spirit. Even when it's uncomfortable, even when you don't feel like it, even when the flesh is fighting you, even when you're tired, even when they're persecuting you, reviling you, speaking lies about you, even when you're surrounded by temptations, it means yielded to the Holy Spirit. Could you imagine if Jesus says it means bypassing your emotions, how you feel? Could you imagine if Jesus said, I don't feel like going to the cross. I'm sure he did not feel like going to the cross. But he bypassed that because he was so yielded to his father. So holiness looks like bypassing your emotions. I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like walking with Jesus today. No, holiness is bypassing that so you can be yielded to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is the one who always leads you to Jesus Christ, even when you don't feel like it. That's, that's another form. That's another way of recognizing holiness. Holiness is also looks like thinking from the mind of Christ and not from the carnal mind, which is of the kingdom of darkness. 
the, the mind of Christ thinks from another dimension. The carnal mind thinks very worldly. It's down here. It's dense. The carnal mind. It's dark. Defiled conscience. The bad thinking. The carnal mind. The mind of Christ thinks from a higher dimension. Remember, Jesus is seated in the heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. Hmm? The con it's another dimension. He is seated high above all power, all might, all principality. He's seated high above all the works of darkness. It's another dimension. So holiness also looks like thinking from the mind of Christ, thinking from a higher dimension. So when someone comes to offend you, someone who's coming from this lower realm, coming to offend you, you being a child of God and the mind of Christ is your inheritance. It's your possession by inheritance. God won't possess what is already yours. So, so somebody comes to offend you and you choose to say, no, I'm not going to get offended by this and fall down to this lower realm. I'm going to think from the mind of Christ, which is a higher dimension. I'm going to bless them. Bless your enemy. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who, 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 who use you. Another example is someone gossiping about you. You can fall down to this level and gossip back at them. Even if it's not in their face, it's behind their back. See, Jesus, I didn't do it in their face. I only did it behind the back. What you're missing that you're missing the point that it's not really what you do on the natural, but what you do in the spiritual. And in the spiritual, you've just received the gossip of the devil into your heart. So you've just divided your heart now. And you will receive everything darkness has, everything that idol has, gossip. And this is why you tend to gossip more. Now you want to go and tell everybody how right you are and how wrong they are. Or it could also be that you're just gossiping within your, the, four bedroom, the four walls of your bedroom. And before you know it, resentment comes in and bitterness. And now you're sitting there meditating on that bitterness, on that resentment, because it grows. That's also a seed. Just as the kingdom of God, the word of God is a seed, so is the ways of darkness a seed. And all the devil wants you to do is start watering that seed, and you water it by entertaining your mind with the things of darkness. That's not holiness. Holiness would be, they've gossiped about me, but I'm not going to gossip back. I'm going to rise higher. I'm going to think from the mind of Christ. And I'm going to, I will bless them. Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you and do good to those who spitefully use you. So are we beginning to understand what holiness looks like? Holiness is the opposite of sin. Holiness is a key that unlocks your blessings. Holiness is one of the keys that proves that you're yielded to the Holy Spirit, that proves that you're allowing Jesus to sit on the throne of your heart as number one. And this is telling, and that's like water in that seed. And this is telling God, God, I'm ready for your kingdom to advance within me. Otherwise, it could go, it could turn out quite terrible. And that quite terrible could look something like this. If you haven't done the work in your heart to be purified, to yield to the Holy Spirit, then it could look something like this. The Lord sends you to go there to cast out a demon or to heal the sick or to bring peace to somebody. Somebody who's living in chaos to bring peace. And you go there to do these things, advance the kingdom of God. And they say something terrible to you. Who are you? Why should I listen to you? And instead of you releasing the love, now you get offended and repay evil for evil. And this is why the work needs to be done within you first. Otherwise it could turn against you and, and, and you could lose a, po a possible soul that could have come to the Lord. And we don't play, we take things like this very seriously, right? And so holiness is a must. So please do not listen to the teachings that say, we're only human, we can't fully stop sinning. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because the Bible says, 1 Peter 
chapter 1, verses 15 through 16 says, But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Be holy, for I am holy. Let me read that again. But as he who called you is holy, who called you? God. And he's what? Holy. He's a holy God. And he's calling you into his holy kingdom. How should kingdom citizens live? Holy. It says you also be holy in all your conduct. How much of your conduct? All your conduct. Which means Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, from the morning to the night, in your conversations, in your thinking, in your actions, in your doings, in all your conduct. Be holy. Because he who called you is holy. He is a holy God. And he's looking for holiness. And holiness is a key that unlocks your blessings. Unlocks your blessings. It's holiness. What did you think? You're going to live in sin and enjoy the blessings? Come on, which world are we living in? Doesn't work that way. You get to choose this kingdom and everything this kingdom offers or a part of what it offers or this kingdom. You get to choose. God is fair. He's very fair. So what does holiness mean once again? Live in God's way. Live in as the word says. Holiness is a transformed heart. Before Jesus Christ comes into your heart, the, the nature of your heart is different. The attitude of your heart is different. Jesus comes into you. He transforms your heart. That's what holiness is. That's what it looks like to water the seed of the kingdom. And the more Jesus is taking more and more and more and more ground on your heart, seated as the only one, the number one on your heart, he is establishing his kingdom within you. It's in the heart. You can lie to yourself and maybe you can lie to others for a time being, but you cannot lie to God. Why? Because out of your heart flow the issues of life. God has done it in such a way where you cannot hide it for too long. God's done it in such a way. Bless his holy name. You can look at someone and know is Jesus sitting number one on their heart? You can look at someone and, and know, are they living in holiness? What did Jesus say? You will know them by their fruit, by their fruit. When someone is living in holiness, it's like watering that seed, which grows into a tree and then so much fruit. If you're looking at someone and it's barrenness, the kingdom of God is not established in them. Please do not go for teachings. Please do not go to receive. Please do not go. Because many false prophets have gone out there into the world. And Jesus says you will know them by their fruit. So what do we look at? The fruit. The fruit. There is no good fruit without walking in the ways of the Lord. There's no good fruit without walking in the ways of the Lord. Jesus is king. And he's inviting you into his kingdom so that you no longer be a citizen of the world, but a citizen of heaven. You're walking on this planet earth, but as a citizen of heaven, you belong to heaven. Your home is heaven. So how does Jesus want his citizens to live? Come on, somebody. Holy. Jesus wants his citizens to live holy. Because these are two different kingdoms. 
you're either walking here and operating from down here, that's another kingdom, or you're walking here but operating from up there, the other kingdom. And God has given you free will. I know where I'm walking and I know where I'm operating from. The question is, where are you operating from? And you have free will. God has given you free will. So we've talked about how the kingdom of God comes near someone just by releasing to someone, bringing healing. Well, that's the kingdom of God that's come near them. They get a taster of what the kingdom of God is like. So they can say, hey, I choose this king. I choose this kingdom. I want to be a part of it. Okay, I receive Jesus. And then that's the second step where he comes in. And the more you yield to the Holy Spirit, the more his kingdom establishes within you. So we've talked about these two. Now let's talk about how to release the kingdom of God. All right. We release the kingdom of God only when the kingdom of God is inside us. The disciple of Jesus went to the, the beggar and he said, gold and silver I do not have, but what I have I give you. What I have I give you. And then what is... What did he say next? Stand up and walk. So what did he give him? Healing. The healing comes from the kingdom of God. So he released the kingdom of God. What I have, I give you. You cannot give what you don't have. If I have 100 euros in my hand and you say, I want 200 euros, I cannot give you 200 because I only have 100. I can only give you what, what I have. I cannot give you what I do not have. And so you cannot give the kingdom, you cannot take the kingdom to somebody if you do not have it. If the level of the kingdom that is established currently in you is just, as, uh, just barely sprouted out of a seed, you cannot give the full fruit. If it's grown, if it's sprouted and germiated more, that's to the level you can give to someone. You cannot give more. But if the kingdom of God is established fully in you, you're fruitful in the kingdom of God and you've produced 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, you can go and give that. That's how you release the kingdom of God. And how? Well, as we have already discussed, let's say you've done all the work with the Holy Spirit and You've, your heart is cleansed of that pride, of that jealousy, of that anger. So you approach someone and they come at you with anger. Why are you telling us about Jesus? And you come back at peace because that's all that's in your heart. Peace. And you come back at peace. You're giving them a taster of the kingdom of God. And maybe they say, well, everybody I speak to in this angry manner, they repay me with anger. And this person, I'm being so loud and so angry. And so negative toward them, and yet they're coming at me with this peace. And you're giving them a taster of the kingdom of God, of the kingdom that they probably know nothing about yet. And that draws them close. I like that. I want more of this. And that's like an open door. That's like plowing the soil of their heart for you to do what? Plant the seed of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Can you see how it's all connected? That's an open door for you to tell them about Jesus so they can receive the Lord Jesus Christ and bang, the seed of the kingdom is within them. We've all been there. We've all started there. There's not one of us here that didn't start there. That's how you release the kingdom of God. The key is holiness. The key is holiness. Praise our Lord. He is faithful. He is good. When you walk as citizens of the kingdom of God and not as citizens of this world, you are releasing the kingdom of God. People are looking at you and observing you and drawing from you probably a lot of times without you even knowing it. You are influencing more people than you know when you are walking as citizens of the kingdom. 
doesn't necessarily have to be somebody face to face with you. It could be someone that is observing you from afar off. And you haven't even spoken a word. But just your ways, your actions. Just your ways, your actions. Remember, the Apostle Peter was walking and just his shadow was falling upon people and they were all being healed and they were all being set free. This is somebody who is walking powerfully in the kingdom of God. This is somebody who has done his watering, who has done his yielding to the Holy Spirit, who has denied the works of darkness. This is somebody who is fruitful in the kingdom of God, who has produced 100 fold. When you produce 100 fold, there are times when you will just your presence will cast out demons and heal the sick and change people and convert people and everything. Just your presence. Just your presence. Them knowing this, this, there's something about this person. What is it? He's a follower of Jesus Christ. That's enough for me. I'm following. A hundredfold. One hundredfold. But it all starts from step one. And then it's a process. This is why the Bible says they produce 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. It's not whoever comes produces 100-fold. You get to choose. Is it so bad that you've come to the Lord and you've produced 60-fold, 70-fold and not 100? Let the Lord work with you. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Let the Lord work with you. Not everybody is called to be an Apostle Paul. Not everybody is called to be one of the 12, but some of you are. And from these who are, we 100 fold is necessary. 100 fold. Imagine the parable of the talents with the one man, he reads the talents. Yeah. And his master came and he says, I don't know the exact words, but you're an evil man. Lazy and wicked servant. Want to use the term. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus is good and he's alive. A part of releasing the kingdom of God looks like this. Our job is to ensure that all bow down to the kingship of Jesus. What does that look like? It means chaos must bow down to peace. Sickness must bow down to good health. Demonic bondages must bow down to freedom in the Lord. Pride must bow down to humility. Sin must bow down to holiness. It means everything. It means bringing everything into submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. It means making sure that everything is coming under the kingship of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we bring heaven on earth. Heaven, that's how we bring God's kingdom on earth. God's kingdom is already established in heaven. It's about bringing it here. It's already full to its fullest in heaven, not so much on earth. The kingdom of God is on earth, just as is the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of God, I tell you, is advancing and growing more and more by the day, every single day. The kingdom of God. And it's our jobs to advance the kingdom of God more. So the kingdom of God first comes within us and then it is released through us. So how does the kingdom of God come to earth? Through vessels. Through vessels. That's how the kingdom of God comes, through vessels. It is our job to ensure that all comes under the kingship of Jesus. God's kingdom on earth looks like this. When we see sickness, that kingdom, that work of darkness must be thrown out and in its place there must be healing, the kingdom of God. It looks like everything coming under the authority of Jesus Christ. Everything. 
That demon that is oppressing that person must leave, must come under the authority of Jesus. That temple there is the temple of God. Everything about that temple must come under the authority of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We need to see that. We need to see the kingdom of God on earth as it already is in heaven. Well, guess what? In heaven, there is no cancer. We must see it here. In heaven, there is no bondage. We must see it here. In heaven, there is no jealousy. We must see it here. In heaven, there is no, uh, there is no pride. We must see it here. And it starts with us. It starts with us receiving the kingdom by receiving the king of that kingdom. And then it's our duty to release what is already ours. And I tell you, freely you have received. Freely you must give. Freely you have received, freely give. Hallelujah. So we've talked about how the kingdom of God comes near you. How the kingdom of God comes within you and establishes within you. And how to release the kingdom of God. There is something that every single one of us can do today. Even if you've just recently come to Jesus and the kingdom of God is as a seed within you. There is still something you can do. What I have, I give to you. If you have a seed, then give a seed. If you have a fruit, give a fruit. If you have peace, give that. Whatever you have, there's something. And the more you give, the more it multiplies. The more you give, the more it multiplies. Because you're drawing from a source. And I personally don't believe that what you give, you only receive that plus one more. I believe when you give, you receive multifold. The more you give, the more multifold. This is what I believe. This is what I'm personally experiencing. Praise the Lord. And I tell you why. This is actually biblical and, I, and I'll tell you why. When God gives you an apple seed, you take a pot and you plant the apple seed and you water it and you make sure it's got the right sun, the right shade, the right everything. When that apple seed grows into a tree, how many fruits are on that tree? If you take just one fruit from this tree and cut it in half, how many seeds are in just that one fruit? This is why it's biblical. It's in nature. God is showing us it's in nature. When you give just one, when you just plant in one, God will give you multifold. A lot more. A lot after you have planted it. You don't plant a seed and the tree is the next day. A lot after you have planted it but a lot more than what you have planted. Freely you have received, and so freely give. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. Now, as we do every week, God is so faithful, He's gracious, as we do every week. Let's all stand to our feet. It's time to release the kingdom of God. It's time for the kingdom of God to come near you. It's time to receive the kingdom. It's time to allow the kingdom to establish more and more within you. Let's start like this. If the Holy Spirit has convicted you today of something that is causing a divided heart, dividing your heart to the Lord, if the Holy Spirit has convicted you, and it's time to let go of that and make sure your heart is undivided for the Lord. It's time to let go of that, hand that over to the Lord Jesus so you can move abundantly in the fullness of his kingdom. If there's a sickness or a disease in your body, it's time for that darkness to leave you in Jesus' name. And it's time for the kingdom of God to come and take over. If there's a demonic bondage, it's time for that to be broken now in the name of Jesus to free you so you can start walking fully in the kingdom of God. Fully walking God's way, living his way. Living as the word of God says. With a transformed heart. Where Jesus Christ is the only one sitting on the throne of your heart as number one. If you're dealing with temptations and sins. 
It's time to hand that over to the Lord. That could be broken off you. Ask for strength to walk in holiness. And so what I want you to do is tell the Lord Jesus Christ what you want him to do for you. Jesus went to the man and he says, what do you want me to do for you? He says, Lord, Lord, I want to see. So the Lord Jesus is saying, what do you want him to do for you? Tell him, Lord, I want to be free from this stomach pain. I want to be free from this cancer. I want to see. I want to walk. I want to be free from this demonic bondage, the bondage of lust, the bondage of addiction, the, the bondage of laziness. This, I want to be free from this tormenting spirit that is tormenting my mind night and day. So begin to tell the Lord Jesus Christ one by one what you want him to do for you. If there is anyone who is sick or who has pain, I think the lady down there, you had pain in your back. You, okay, you can come first. Come first. And then the other lady who had pain in her, in her back. Come here, please. Stand here. What's the problem? Elaido. 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 Pain. Elaido. 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 Πιάνει εδώ, αλλά έρχεται μέχρι εδώ. Όχι εδώ. Εδώ πίσω και έρχεται μέχρι εδώ. Οκ. Έλα γύρι στην πλάτη. Γύρι στην πλάτη. Γύρι στην πλάτη. Μπράβο. Όχι, έτσι, έτσι. Είναι κακό παιδί για αυτό. Όχι, έλα γύρισε. Έλα. So he's saying that he has pain on his shoulder, but it's covering the whole, the whole, it comes all the way down to his back. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to heal you now. In the name of Jesus, I command this pain, this tension, this strain to leave you now in Jesus' name. Come out of him. Out. Out. What's happening? Hello? Every last bit of pain, leave him out in Jesus' name. Every pressed nerve to be released now in Jesus' name. Out. Out of him. Hello? Out. D. 
తీగినది Every last bit of you leave this man now. Be restored fully in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus heals you. Tiinete. Efiente ya. Τώρα έχει κάτι εδώ. Οκ. Full freedom in Jesus' name. Out of him. Out of him. Out of him. El exceto tora. Dame. 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 Εδώ. Εδώ. Πριν μου είπες αμέ. Α, οκ. I command healing, full healing in Jesus' name. Be restored now in Jesus. Be straightened. Be straightened and restored in the name of Jesus, Ishose. Alexa, to Tora. Hello. John. We're carrying the girl man. Bravo. He said, "The hand of the Lord has touched me. The hand of the Lord has touched him." Thank you, Jesus. Godidin, Godidin. Ose ostoi kanen. I ask you to pray over my hearing. Come stand here, please. And the sleepiness what we spoke about. So my hearing is like my ears feel like, you know, where you've got that hollow sound in them. Yes. Okay. So there's like a blocking in the ears. You feel like a hollow, like a hollow sound. Like an echo sound in yeah. your ears. How long has this been happening for? About three weeks. Now. About three weeks now. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Lord Jesus will, and, and this is happening right now? Right now. Okay, yeah. the Lord Jesus will heal you now. In the name of Jesus. I command these ears to open now in Jesus' name. <coughs> Everything hindering these ears to leave now in Jesus' name. These ears to be unstopped now in the name of Jesus. I declare your hearing to restore fully. In Jesus' name. 
Amin. Feels like a just like an opening now. Something opened. He says it feels that there's an opening. Something has opened. Test. Yeah. Test. Pardon? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Thanks. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Uh, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, also, also, we have one more issue. Uh, two weeks ago, this man was here and he had an issue with just sleeping everywhere he could find the chair. He would just doze off. And the Lord Jesus set him free for that. And he was free for four days, but then somewhere a door was opened and it's back. So um, let's just stay in silence for a, a moment and see what the Lord is giving. Suffer okay. little children who come in to me. Say again. Suffer little children who come unto me. That's what comes to mind. <coughs> Be free from this heaviness. <sighs> Every spirit of infirmity, leave. <sighs> Be free. What is happening here? Pain, yeah. Did this just happen now? Yeah. It's like a jump from where your hand was today. Leave him in the name of Jesus. I command every last bit of you to come out of him now. Out. <coughs> out. <coughs> Be free from this. Amen. Every heaviness leave you now. Maybe one day we must do the deliverance. Might be something in the other. But I felt something go out. He says, I felt something leave me, go out of me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, everybody. Jesus Christ. Thank, thank you, you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Um, the, the, the food issue. Yes. Okay. Yes. See okay. to that. I will, I'll phone you about that. Hallelujah. Broadcast. Praise the Lord. And just another thing I want to say. It's the first time here that I've experienced the peace and the tranquility of this place. Okay. It looks very peaceful, very tranquil. So it is working for coming here. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. You. God bless you. You, you you want to do you want to bring your chair? I will sleep. Uh, Amen. Ah, uh, do you do you have pain? I want sleep. Ah, you want sleep? Okay. 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 It's time for everybody to hand over to the Lord that which you need the Lord to take away from you. So let's all stand on our feet. Tell the Lord, Lord, take away this sickness. Take away this bondage and those watching online. Ask the Lord Jesus to set you free. There is healing. There is freedom for everybody today. Everybody. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to set you free from that bondage. The bondage of lust, the bondage of addiction, the bondage of torment, any bondage. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to set you free. Go. Let me Come. Come on. I have now nothing for me. Okay. <laughs> Do you want peace? I want sleep. You want sleep? Okay, you will go to sleep. Let's begin. In the name of Jesus, let every witchcraft be broken off of you. Every curse upon your life, 
every spoken curse upon your life, whether it's something you have spoken yourself or something that was spoken over you directly or indirectly or a curse that is coming down from your family timeline. In the name of Jesus, let this be destroyed and broken off of you now in Jesus' name. Every, every spell placed upon your life be broken off of you now in Jesus' name. Every demonic sacrifice made upon your life, every demonic ritual, demonic covenant, demonic agreement that you have made with the side of darkness, be destroyed now in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare this be broken off of you now in Jesus' name. Every altar of darkness set up against you be cast down now in Jesus' name. Every witch prayer sent toward you, everywhere your name is being used for evil, everywhere darkness is calling you to i call you back from the streets from the drugs from the darkness i call you back into the, the presence of god in jesus name let this be done Every oppression upon your mind that is bringing confusion, that is bringing depressive thoughts, thoughts of not wanting to live, bipolar, ADHD, any and every kind of mental oppression, I command in the name of Jesus must be lifted off of you now in Jesus' name. Let the agreements made with the side of darkness be broken off of you in Jesus' name. Every death word spoken, I don't want to live anymore. I wish I were dead. Let that be cancelled now in Jesus' name. Every spirit bringing confusion and chaos, stealing your peace. I command you in Jesus' name, leave. Amen. Spirit of lust, go. Spirit of fear, go. Amen. Every spirit coming in and tormenting you in your waking life, in your dream life, tormenting your mind, go in Jesus' name. Amen. Every vow and binding oath afflicting your soul be cancelled now in Jesus' name. Everyone who is dealing with addiction of some kind, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command this spirit to loose you and leave you now. Any spirit that came in through childhood hurt, childhood abuse, uh, some kind of torment, an accident. I command these spirits, every last one of them, one by one, out. In Jesus' name. Every spirit speaking against your identity in God, your true identity, causing you to think you are somebody that you are not. Speaking against your worth and telling you you're not worthy. Speaking lies to you. I command these spirits and this lying spirit to leave you now in Jesus' name.
I declare freedom over your mind now. I give you peace in the name of Jesus. Everything standing hindering this peace that I am releasing. Leave now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free in your mind. Peace in your heart. Rest in your souls. Be strengthened in the Lord. May your eyes open to see the love that God has for you. I speak to your eyes to be open now in Jesus' name. Those who have health problems, I release healing to you. Those watching online, healing to your hearts. The Lord Jesus, nothing is too difficult for him. He's healing your heart. He's healing your lungs. He's healing your kidneys. He's healing your liver. your stomach, your intestines. Every organ is being restored in Jesus' name. He's cleansing your blood. He's removing tumors, cysts. He's removing them. Wherever they are, he's, he's removing them. Tumors in the brain, in the body, leave in Jesus' name. Cancer, leave in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, Parkinson's, out. In Jesus' name. He's restoring your spine. Those who have a problem with the spine, with your back, the Lord Jesus is healing you now. From where even those who are watching from afar, He's healing you now. Those who need strength in their legs, in your feet, in your knees, in your thighs. The Lord is healing you. He's strengthening your muscles, your bones, your veins. He's strengthening your legs. Stand up and walk in your healing. In the name of Jesus. I release this peace to you. I release this peace. This it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. The back is okay. Anyone who is Anyone who is dealing with despair and giving up on life and those who believe the lies of the devil telling them they're not worthy, worthy. And those who have lost hope, I release peace to you. Hope in the name of Jesus. May your ears and your eyes and your hearts open to know the truth of the Lord Jesus. 
to see God's love for you. Receive this now in Jesus' name. Amen. And that spirit bringing complaining, I command you in Jesus' name to leave. <laughs> Despair, leave. This darkness around your conscience, around your mind, leave in Jesus' name. Be free. Be free. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. Father, we give you all the glory for what you have done today. We bless you. We glorify you. We give you all the glory. We thank you that your presence has filled this park. Your glory has filled this place. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. May God's hand be upon you. May you bear good fruit for his kingdom. In Jesus' name, go in peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.